Hello everybody, this is Mr. Zenith, and welcome back to another 15-minute tier list. The show where we make a Fire Emblem tier list in 15 minutes. Today is Awakening. And oh boy, Awakening is a game that pretty much every unit can be good because of the way that reclassing works, resetting levels. So it really depends on what your criteria are for grading. Now, I don't feel like I should do a Lunatic or Lunatic Plus tier list because that would just amount to Robin being at the top, Frederick being around there just below, and pretty much everyone else being worthless. Uh, <laughs> not specifically, but something like that. So I'm going to judge based primarily on hard mode, hard to Lunatic, uh, because I feel like they're... Once again, hard is a little bit too easy for some of these things, but Lunatic is far too difficult for what it is, so... Uh, yeah, let's go with that. <laughs> let's go with that, and let's start out, as we always do, with the main lord. I think Krom's a solid B tier. He's not super impressive, but he's never bad. Having an infinite use falchion, even though it is basically a bronze sword, <laughs> or iron sword, for most of the game, is not bad. Um really solid unit. I've always thought that he's built kind of like Ike, where he might take a little bit to get going, but he has strength, he has decent speed. Uh, you can put him as Paladin as one of his reclass options, and he's pretty good there. Uh, pretty much anything that allows him to still use his sword. Or you can even change him to Sniper and be funny. Um, but yeah, solid unit. Has some good stuff he can do, especially towards end game. Really good against uh, final boss. Lucina as well, I'm going to put probably a B tier, because while she comes later, she is a lot more useful right off the bat, with the Parallel Falchion being an infinite use 12 damage instead of 5 uh, that the regular Falchion is for most of the game. Uh, really solid unit, again, really good speed, pretty decent strength, a little bit lacking in survivability, and again, doesn't join in until like 10 or 12 chapters in. Robin, where is Robin? Both Robins... I'm pretty sure RS rank. I don't know if there's a meaningful difference between male and female Robin. There's a difference in who you can support and who Morgan ends up becoming. But overall, I feel very strongly that they are S tier, easily, hands down. Um, another S tier unit, which might need a little bit more justification to some, is Frederick. Uh, this is mostly for Lunatic, but his performance on hard is pretty good as well. He will fall off about halfway through the game uh, because of his low growth rates relative to other units, but even when he falls off, he's a good stat backpack. Builds supports pretty easily, gives massive bonuses, especially in defense and strength, which is what you need. Um, increases mobility, I think, as well as a great knight. Um, just an infinitely good unit uh, for the early game and even for mid and even into late game. Uh, the one weakness that he has is as a great knight, he's vulnerable to pretty much every effective weapon in the game outside of Worm Slayers. But that doesn't really slow him down too much, it just means that you have to watch out for one or two Risen with hammers that will one-shot him on Lunatic. That's, that's the way that that works. Um, who else? There are a lot of units that you only get basically post-game, and... Because this is a regular game tier list, I am going to put them in F tier. This is not saying that they are bad units, this is saying that they don't have availability to be useful. Um, this is pretty much all of like the enemy commanders that you end up uh, recruiting, or bonus game characters who really shouldn't exist, but do exist anyway. Um, I believe that's all of them. Yeah. Yeah, so that's, that's all of them. Uh, child units are going to run the gambit as well of usefulness. I'm going to put C for child unit um, for the most part. Because when you get them and who you pair them up with varies greatly in terms of their usefulness. Um, some parents you can give them very broken skill combinations with things like Gale Force, um, or things, again, other combinations, I guess, that work out pretty well. Uh, something to keep in mind, though, is that along with that, there is going to be the question of 
is it reasonable to judge these units based on the potential skills that they can have or a more realistic blending? I'm actually going to put the uh, Morgans in B tier instead of C tier because with access to Robin's skill and class diversity, uh, they are just stronger and better overall. Um, being a Manakeet, I think, uh, puts you up as well. Is there anyone else? Yeah. Yeah, this looks fine to me. To kind of give them all C tier because of late joining, because of weird restrictions. Sometimes their maps are particularly difficult. Sometimes you can totally screw them up with a bad pairing or bad skill set. And if I assume optimal for all of them, well then that's not fair because that's a lot of grinding that you have to do for some of them outside. Like, for instance, Olivia. Olivia's an S-tier unit. She's a dancer, she comes pretty early, she can fight, she can reclass, but you're mostly going to want to be using her as a dancer. Olivia can reclass into a Pegasus Knight, which can class up into a Dark Flyer, which could get Gale Force, which could be passed down to Inigo. The logistical how long you have to grind in order to get that scale force on Inigo is why I'm not going to say that Inigo always gets Gale Force just because he can get Gale Force. Because that is at least 25 levels of grinding that you have to give Olivia. At least. Like, if you optimally do that level to 10, promote level to 15. And that's a lot of grinding for Awakening. Now, granted, if you're on hard mode or normal or easy or whatever, it's going to be a lot faster, but it's still going to take some time, it's still going to take reeking boxes, or it's going to take access to the DLC. If you're on Lunatic, forget about it, forget about grinding up Mass Gale Force without the DLC, that's not possible. Um, yeah, yeah, very much so. As for the non-child units that are still good, uh, Sumia is very good. She comes in. I'm not necessarily going to give her S tier because you still have to train her, still have to put in the effort. But she comes in really early, good class, good mobility, great timing for everything. Um, Cordelia, probably around an A tier as well. Comes in a couple chapters later, but is just as good, just as valuable. I'm going to put Sully and Stall in B tier, because they never really impressed me that much. Uh, they can be really good. It really depends on their growth. They kind of end up, for a lot of people, being kind of middling. In fact, I'd say that Stall might be down to C tier, because Sully is generally better than Stall, but neither of them are super impressive for, for being, you know, the Christmas calves. Uh, the Bull and Panther, as they were. Donal. How do you rate Donal? Do you rate Donald by saying he is worthless trash in the early game? Do you rate him by saying he is amazing god tier in the late game? Uh, I'm going to put D tier for Donald, Donald tier, uh, because it's not that hard to train him up in hard mode or in below. It is near impossible to train him up in lunatic or lunatic plus. That's the way you have to do. Um, he, in order to recruit him on Lunatic, you have to Donal an Archer. It's why I have that phrase, Donaling an Archer. Surround an Archer on all three sides and put Donal on the fourth. And attack for like 15 turns, because he starts getting less and less experience as you attack the same enemy more and more. Uh, that's just kind of how he is. So, with that in mind, I think judging base purely on that perspective, for... Lunatic, I would have to give him F tier, maybe E if I'm being generous. Uh, for hard mode, I could bump him up to D tier, um, but that's really about it. Virion is never good. He's usually usable, at least for a couple chapters, but he's never great. Uh, Maribel... Here's the thing, healers are either really good or really bad, and in a game like Awakening that is just built to be... I don't know what Awakening is built to be sometimes. It's a very weird game, a very strange game, and I don't think that Maribel is super useful, though I will give her C tier. 
and probably B tier for Lissa just because the variety of things she can do, um, the very helpful nature of staffs in the early game, even if in the late game you're just powering through, surviving off of overpowered skill combinations. Um, our resident armor knight, who can also be a, a thief, <laughs> I think is maybe C tier worthy. I've not really used him that much. I think it's funny to that an armor knight is also a like it's armor knight and thief because of his weird nobody sees me gimmick. Um, I think he's just kind of mediocre. Tharja, um, I could give Tharja top of C, maybe bottom of B. Um, she's reasonable, but she's not durable enough really to Nosferatu tank, um, unless you heavily invest into her. Which a lot of people do, because a lot of people for some reason love Tharja. I never got it. People have tried to explain it to me. Just not my thing. Um, Rickon as well, I'll give probably... He was always kind of decent for me, but then again, I also did show him favoritism, so I'm wondering if I should probably put him down to like D tier. I'll give him C tier, he's reasonable. Oh yeah, Kjell, uh, <laughs> you're another uh, child unit. Um... Longku, look, everyone loves Longku, everyone says Longku's amazing. I've only found him decent at best. I think he can be pretty good, uh, but I think that if you don't immediately use him and level him quite well, uh, he can fall, fall off. Same with Gregor. Gregor's actually a bit more solid than Longku, but gives up a couple chapters of usefulness, so not, not bad, not bad again. Henry is a little more durable than Tharja, but not quite as fast or as... It's, it's different. There, there are things you can do with Henry. He's more built to be a Nosferatu tank, though if you really want a Nos, Nos tank, then just make Robin a Nos tank, and you're good to go. Uh, Shursh comes in too late to really demand higher than B tier, but when you get her, she is a great unit, especially for the time you get her at. Noe as well. Dragons are 1-2 range. Dragons don't need to worry about weapon durability, but that means dragons can't also use forged weapons. I don't think you can forge dragon stones in this. You just get the dragon stone plus. Oh yeah, the dragon stones do have durability. Um, if I remember right. Am I remembering right? I don't actually remember. I remember Noe being good, but not being game-breaking because... She's generally useful in most situations, but she doesn't... It's kind of like the... She's the master key. Perfectly good, perfectly fine, red mage type thing. You know, jack of all trades. Can do much whatever you need her to do. But you're never really gonna feel like she's doing in any one thing incredibly well. Uh, Seiri... I guess I could put to C tier, because... She comes in, she's fast, she's useful. She doesn't come in too late, she comes in the very start of the wall hard arc. Um, Pan. If you build her up, she can be a really good anti-cavalry unit. Um, but I just never really like the whole beast stone lock to one range gimmick. At least mana have one, two permanently in Awakening. Mm, with Pan, that's just not, not really my thing. Uh, I guess I can give her C tier, though, um, because, again, she does have usefulness. She does have things going for her. I just don't really know how to use that. Libra, again, everyone in Awakening is, like, C tier. Everyone's fine. Tiki is fine. Not great, but not terrible. She's fine. I think probably deserves C tier as well. Um, Vake... I've rarely had a good Vake, but I've also not really had an absolutely terrible Vake. He just takes a little bit to get going, kind of like Void. Um, Anna is quite good. You can get her pretty early. Uh, the whole Trickster Acrobat Lucky 7 thing uh, does well for her. Muriel, uh, maybe I can do this sort of swap around, because Muriel is technically better than Rickon. They're both pretty similar, but if you need a mage, she's an early game mage. She's fine. She's perfectly adequate. <laughs> Basilio and Flavia, I don't know how to rate either, because you get them 
at the end, like after the end of the wall heart arc, they're under leveled for when they come in. They're a little understated, but once again, they're kind of just that solid level of. They're the filler characters that come in when you really need someone else to fill in, and they do the job. I think given this, I have to put... Um, let's see, I have a couple more minutes, right? Nope, I've hit 15 minutes. Um, This seems fine to me. Yeah, I don't necessarily think that I'd make any major changes. Everyone in Awakening feels the same. I know that they're not. I know that they're very different. If someone could rant all about the child units and all their specific differences, I don't care. Everyone in Awakening feels the same outside of Robin, Frederick, Olivia, Sumia, Cordelia, Cherishi. I think that means Cherishi should be up in A tier. Um, everyone B tier and above feels more unique. Everyone in C tier and D tier doesn't really feel unique or stand out. And then E tier is just you gotta invest for what you're getting. And then F tier is units that shouldn't exist in the first place. They just technically do because you can recruit them in random Xenolog paralogs right before the very last chapter. And that's it. They're just there for funsies. Anyway, that's my Awakening 15 minute tier list. Leave your angry comments and corrections uh, in the comments down below. Leave a like of the video if you enjoyed. Uh, next up is Fates, and we will see how we are doing Fates. I'm debating splitting it up into the three different games because the units operate very differently between the games. We'll see. That's probably what I'm going to be doing. Anyway, thank you for watching. This is Mithril Zenith signing out. Have a good one. Peace.